Hi. Hi, everyone. Welcome to another episode of The Cafecito. I am your host, Christiana. Thanks to We The Plug for being our sponsor. As you all know, The Cafecito is a web series that connects with everyday people doing extraordinary things. And each week, we try to uh, bring to you um, different folks uh, in the global ecosystem uh, to share their story, their journey with you so that it may influence you, impact you in a positive way, uh, and also give you an opportunity to connect with someone that you may not have otherwise known existed. So thank you so much for joining us today. And I'm excited to have our guest today, Manuel Zamora. <laughs> Did I say your last name right? Did I pronounce it right? Yeah, that, that was perfect. Thank you for that. Just so you know, I've been, I've been uh, practicing. I've been working on my pronunciations of words. I stumble sometimes. Have you ever noticed when you're saying certain words, you'll like get tongue tied? Yeah, it happens pretty consistently. I think it's just the mind running away from the math. Here. The split. I get it. All right. Well, welcome. Glad to have you on today. Um, why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself? Tell the people your name and the company that you run or companies that you ran. Yeah, so I am Manuel Zamora. I was um, <clears throat> uh, born in Peru, came over when I was 11. You know, really was into entrepreneurship, just kind of building out my own things, whether they were good or bad, <laughs> whether they were good or rather. Um, Meaning whether people wanted them or not, not like they did bad. <laughs> uh, I, mean, I don't think they were bad. I don't know what you're saying. <laughs> whether people wanted them or not. It's potentially not the best products. <laughs> <laughs> Luckily, though, um, you know, a few of them were very well received. Today in History was the first one that was well received, and it got uh, a few million downloads um, being early in the App Store, the educational space. And overall, I think a lot of people still continue to enjoy it. So I continue to improve upon that one. Um, and it's been a fun journey. We hopefully will get featured next month by Apple. We will see. They've reached out about something like that. Um, Dailies. Uh, Dailies is the current project that I'm working on, however, which is really taking a step back and trying to see what where we could make an impact in education. And we felt that uh, parental empowerment was something that we really kind of gravitated against, making sure that parents had all the information information they need. Um, when, in regards to their children's educational journey. So they can see what their children are trying to learn. Um, they can facilitate as needed, fill in potential learning gaps. And really they can start to understand what it means to you know, be a sixth grader at this particular school at this time, right? It's very different from when they were going to school. So they don't know the, sure. the curriculum or how even the teaching methodologies that are involved. So kind of trying to be, a, be there to be an educator in that sense. So I really appreciate how you, um, when you first shared, you were saying um, something to the effect of, you know, I've started a couple of companies, um, uh, uh, launched some apps, and um, you launched them. And um, whether you felt like you knew exactly um, who would be um, purchasing them or not, you had kind of done a little bit of your customer discovery enough to know that there was a need there, but you launched it. So um, I want to kind of deep dive into that a little bit, but tell me how you got here. I mean, you were living in Peru, born and raised in Peru, and then your family relocated you to the U.S. Um, like, was this something that you always dreamt of doing as being an app developer? Um, I don't know about an app developer, but I think, um, you know, early on, I did gravitate towards inventors in general. So um, the kind of individual who some might call a nerd, who, for example, during the summer break would go to the library and just get stacks of books, you know, more so than he should even be allowed, and <laughs> would just read them kind of endlessly. Um, and I gravitated towards chess books for some reason, but also a lot of inventor related things. So, you know, um, Da Vinci and all the kind of big names and um, who kind of have shaped the world that we're in. So you always had that kind of curious mind of thinking bigger than what was kind of put before you. 
and and maybe designing it in a way that could be more useful or like what what was what was your thought process when you just was absorbing all this content in these books I mean, it was just interest, right? You know, interest in history and interest in what people had done beforehand, like maybe what circumstances they were in when they made the decisions that they made. You know, a lot of the times people are inventing something that at this point is, seems basic, right? But just based on where they were at the time, it was probably quite the leap um, and quite the risk to even do it uh, when they did it. So it's interesting, I guess, to try to look at everything from the historical perspective rather than ours. I really like that um, idea. Like, so, you as a child had this curious mind and um you know for you it sounds like it was more than just um creating an app it was about um, opening up pathways uh for people to have better experiences with their daily um activities or um and it sounded like for you history was really important for you as well so uh, you know how did you move from i want to learn more about this, I want to impact this in a positive way to, I'm just gonna go for it and actually start creating it. Um, I think it came kind of naturally, you know, I wouldn't say that I was the most engaged student even when I was in high school. Really? Uh, no, I mean, I liked learning things. I didn't like learning the things I was being told to learn always. So oh, I think it's more- good point. Yo, that's a good point. Yep, yep. <laughs> I think it's more like, um, I like potentially being challenged more so than I felt like I was in high school. And I happened to be very good at mathematics or logic in general. Um, and I think that kind of led me to computer science as a degree that made a lot of sense for me. And it kind of went from there in terms of loving inventors or thinking that I wanted to be one. And then computer science, that kind of just became, you know, being an entrepreneur, I guess at this point, some people might call it initially, uh, where I would just build out products for myself or even for example, one of my early applications was called an income tax estimator that I worked on with my brother. Uh, we were- How old were you? Were you like a kid doing this? No, that was junior, junior in college. Wait, hold on. We were working on that. Did you say that you came up with a tax? Wait, what was it, a tax what? <laughs> income tax estimator, so basically- In junior uh, high? as a junior in college oh okay <laughs> oh my come on wait a minute man <laughs> okay got it no i don't even think we had a computer in junior high like this is all we there was a lot of catching up to do <laughs> um, basically in college gotcha but go ahead so explain what it did what was the thesis of it yeah i mean basically my family they do a lot of tax services so they help um immigrants, for example, be able to kind of do their, get their tax refunds or, or meet their tax legal obligations, what? right? Um, that's what a lot of my family does. That would be maybe- Well, the give family. them a shout out. Let's, 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 let's shout them out so we know um, who they are and we can refer. Yeah, I mean, Zamora Tax and Immigration in Pomona, California, if people are interested. And then Zamora Services outside of that, but um, in general, yeah, so that's, we built that application rather me and my brother were just kind of, again, I was learning iOS development and he kind of wanted to flex like his entrepreneurial muscles as well. So he was the content expert because he knew a lot more about taxes than I did. I did the most basic taxes of all time, you know? <laughs> um, but they do all the complicated things with actual dependents and everything else. And I would do the, you know, somebody gets paid, has no children, good to go, very basic stuff. Um, but the data tax later was a, was a fun project in general, really sad. Didn't really know how to market it or build a business around it, but you know it was a fun project to have worked on and so you all built this in your junior year of college and you rolled it out like your your family implemented it in their um day-to-day -day work and you all promoted it like where did, did it go anywhere is it on the back burner right now <laughs> that one didn't really go anywhere it was something that we released and didn't know to really promote we were more interested i think in building products at the time so it's just build that product, move on to the next one. Um, that one didn't come out though until like maybe two years later. We were just ideating it early on. I really appreciate how you all, uh, you and your brother um, was comfortable in kind of taking these risks. I think oftentimes um, when we are in the ideation stage, we stay stuck in that phase longer than we need to because of insecurities or, you know, 
a lot of other uh, challenges that we may face. How how was it for you? I mean, is it just natural for you to go from ideation stage to let's start executing and building something out? Or do you have to do self-talk to move you out of that? Like how, how does that work for you? Yeah, I think initially it was, I mean, we just assumed that it would do well and we just did it. Like it doesn't, <laughs> we didn't really think of the business sense behind early ideas. We just kind of wanted to see this thing live and see what it would do. And it's only going to take like a month or two of our time. Like we, we think in very long, uh, I guess, in a very long term scale in terms of projects. We'll just do a few projects, have fun while doing it, learn a lot while doing it. And hopefully something great comes out of it. And if it doesn't go oh well, like the journey was part of the fun. And I think we did a lot of that, um, you know, right after college or in college, like late college. I really like that. It's like you were attacked, detaching from the outcome and just focusing on um, putting something out there, like putting your idea into um, a solid format and then from there seeing where it takes you. Um, but I think also um, you, the naivety of, you know, the whole process and just going for it, I think is really nice as well because when you're like not sure of how to do anything and it's early stage for you, you can really take advantage of that. Like, I don't know. I'm just going to try to test it out. So um, tell me a little bit about um, the project that you're working on now, because it's more than just an app. You all are looking at revolutionizing how parents engage with students. And you shared a little bit about that. Parents engage with, with, with their uh, children um, as a student, as well as how the education system um engages with students especially in lieu of our new norm COVID. Hi. shout out to COVID. my goodness gracious it is flipping us but talk a little bit about what that looks like um yeah i mean it's it's a lot really we're still figuring it out of course so whatever i say now is hopefully valid in two months but might have tweaked or we might have pivoted who knows exactly um, but in general, we are hoping to build that community of empowered parents, right? So we are building out a blog and hopefully to follow with a newsletter, maybe some sort of small community um, where parents who want to try the daily system out um, can do that. And generally, it's about making sure that the parents have that information they didn't otherwise have and that they want to wear that badge of like, I understand exactly what my child is trying to learn. So let's have legitimate conversations about what exactly he's having trouble with. It's not just a high level check in every three months it's a very detailed now conversation we could have because i have all this information right uh, so it's giving people taking people to that level so as a parent i know well i'm not a parent but i play one on tv um <laughs> in the role of auntie and so i've had uh, my nephew uh, like during covid i was working with my seven-year-old nephew and then i had my 18 year old nephew um, and they each had obviously different um, challenges with, with their uh, schoolwork. One is in college, one is in second grade, right? Um, and there was like, there were times that usually it was around the math stuff. I'm not going to lie. Like math is not my strongest subject, but so much has changed since I was in school in the dinosaur years. And so when I was looking at it, I just was like, uh, hold on, let me Google this. So <laughs> for parents or caregivers or cool aunties like myself who find ourselves being, um, you know, faced with supporting um, students as we become kind of that strong support system in the home environment, um, does your app help to navigate that process a little bit more smoothly or give uh, tips? Um, I know you mentioned the blog, but um, are there also resources that um, can be accessed on the app for people who may be struggling, <laughs> the adults that are struggling along with the students? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, definitely. So I think, um, well, two things really. So I have a niece that's using the platform and a nephew as well. Okay. Um, and you know, a big part of that was that involvement of more than just the parents. So mm -hmm. we have what we call a village that we build around the child in the application, and that's their social features where when the child does a lesson, 
we can see that lesson in everyone in the village whose uncles, aunts, grandparents, mentors, whatever it may be. Stop it. And actually comment on the specific thing that they're learning on. No, stop it. Are you serious? <gasps> yeah. <laughs> that's, that's, the, that's the whole intent, to expose exactly what they're having trouble with. Um, you can see it there. You can see what they missed. We even tell you how many times they've encountered this and if it's actually an issue or not. Now, if it is an issue, it's time to intervene, right? And you can see how they have seen that concept before in the product as well. So you can click on it and see the history of that. So for example, if I'm trying to learn a word in vocabulary, we can see that this is the fourth time I've encountered this word, and this is the exact problem that I'm having trouble with. I don't understand like how to use it in a sense in context, or I don't know its antonyms or synonyms, et cetera. And you can kind of debug from there, um, you know, as a, as one of the village members, you can assist there because you, you're pinpointed exactly to what's wrong. Manual. This is one of the most, I think, and this is coming from someone, uh, you know, I've worked in the education system um, uh, doing programming um, through uh, the nonprofit that I was with at the time. Um, and our focus is on um, antisocial behavior. And oftentimes that antisocial behavior was connected to the, uh, in the, the child struggling with understanding comprehension, language, um, you know, a variety of things. And one of those things was not always feeling supported um, when they would go home and, 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 you know, because people have commitments, right? And you creating something that would allow the student to, or the child, um, the adolescent, to feel supported um, in ways that they would not normally. I mean, because right now the way it is, it's a one-to-one, um, -one, you know, ratio with um, the teacher to the student. And even though you may be in the classroom with other students, like you know, I saw my nephews doing, it, it, it wasn't the village that you're talking about, which is like literally covering you outside of the school system and saying, hey, look, I'm here to help. I see this is going on. So I can be in Chicago and I can check in with my nephew in California to see what's going on. And I may have a strength in the area that the parents don't and I can jump in as long as I have a login. So it's like a login type of thing, right? Wow. Yeah, correct. How did you like, were you, so I'm assuming that you have uh, a team of people that are helping you with this. Like, how did you all, conceptualize this type of approach? What's the, the thought process behind? I mean, I know personally why it works because I worked in the system, but can you talk a little bit about um, what, what was the uh, thought process that got you here? Yeah, so initially when we built it out, the idea was to be able to get family members involved and it wasn't clear how. I think once we expanded our team and we had additional team members like Jessica Shelley, for example, who's our head of curriculum and she's, you know, a mother of three. She's a Shout teacher. Out to Jessica. <laughs> she's a teacher. She has her MS in curriculum creation and she's an incredibly hardworking individual just in general. Like she's, you know, she's, she's just doing it all, I guess it feels like sometimes, but um. <laughs> You know, when she came on board, it became a lot clearer how we can actually incorporate the village teacher, just how to get that emotional support in the product, right? How to get um, the exposure, I guess. Yeah, I mean, that's, this is where it's so important to kind of have the right people at the table, because when you're looking at the whole picture of the child, it is looking at all those different components that you would not see um, uh, in a tangible way in the classroom, but that child comes in with a whole army of challenges and successes and, and, and just influences in their life. And if there is no space to actually uh, support that in the times that they're in right now, then it kind of um, falls to the wayside. But I love how you guys have come together and figured it out. The emotional intelligence piece is so crucial. Um, so your curriculum, what is the age range that it's targeting? Um, just currently we're focused on starting in, uh, middle schools. Okay. So six, seven, eight in general, just kind of expanding and branching out from there. 
Okay. So um, middle school um, and uh, for initially, and then will you include all K through 12 at some point as you're building out the software? As we're growing, we're hoping to have 4th through 12 figured out on our current platform. And we envision that K through 4th might be a very different kind of design and feel than our current platform. But, our, but what we have right now, we're hoping is really a lifelong learning product. You can take that past 12 and hopefully we'll think about what does an adult want to learn and how do they want to learn. I think that's changing right now um, in, in ways that are kind of unheard of how adults are learning and how people are kind of breaking out of the college system or at least adjusting it based on, you know, the current situation. I think a lot of people aren't going to be very happy with how much they have to pay for what they're getting, especially remotely. So that's, that, that might look different in four years. Um, but at that point, we'll probably explore how dailies can continue to be a lifelong learning tool. Yeah, no, that is something that's definitely um, being challenged right now, which is um, how do I, how are you going to justify the amount of money I'm paying out and the education that I'm getting is not matching what I would have got if I was in person. And then also just to look at it and say, you know, I, I think it, it's a positive in many ways because it, it's such an antiquated structure that it's time, um, it's long overdue for this change and it's forced. Um, but I think it's welcome. I know those of us in the education system um, that are have, that have been advocating for change, we're welcoming this. And so what you're doing right now is just um, so exciting to hear. Has this already launched? So um, are you already, um, have you already released this to the public or is it just a test group that you're working with right now? Yeah, so we're slowly we're slowly expanding upon it. I think our limiting factor is mainly the curriculum. So right now we have an SAT vocabulary curriculum and a sixth grade uh, vocabulary curriculum and maybe a fifth as well. Like um, we have a limited amount of content. Uh, we are hoping to finish by the end of next month. I think our full sixth grade curriculum and like kind of a wider array of the vocabulary curriculum, and then we can get more aggressive. I think with. Um, you know, expanding and talking to all kinds of parents and getting them involved. It's kind of hard to like sell somebody on something and then their child is on, you know, is in the eighth grade and we can't do much about them unless they happen to need the SAP or sixth grade version. So they're outliers in some way. Uh, yeah, I completely understand that. And so right now they're able to access it on their smartphone or on their computer. Yes, we have uh, we have iPhone applications for the parents and for the learners, and they're very different in general. Um, and same for the web uh, components. We have that for the parents, and the learner one is a little bit probably coming later. Wait, so is it only iOS right now, or do, is it also um, Android users? It does not. Android users can use it via the web version, which is more okay. responsive. Okay. Okay. Perfect. So that's a good distinction so for right now. Um, okay, good. And so um, is there like pricing, um, a subscription, like what's your price model um, right now? Right now it's free. Uh, I think uh, eventually we are going to go to a freemium kind of model where the baseline education is free, but maybe doing like a full curriculum, you know, six courses at a time, five courses at a time, that becomes a paid thing. Okay, and so, which is really nice um, to hear that um, something um, that is so valuable is accessible to all and there is no barrier in, in relation to the price point. Um, but, um, so do you have to have, I know for certain um, softwares, you have to have like a really high speed um, connection in order to really get it to work. Um, does that factor in at all? Not really. Uh, once you have downloaded the, the product, we just download the course, which is a small connection. After that, you can do everything potentially offline, but you would probably want to sync up at least once a week um, content wise. And we, we basically have made it so lo-fi so that ideally we could take this platform to Latin America, you know, rather soon where you might not have a very consistent connection. Um, you can still do all your learning offline remotely and you're just syncing up for like the fun gamification features so that your quests get completed and you can check in on your achievements and things like that. 
That's fantastic. I love that you are making it equitable um, in that manner. Um, and then you also have to be connected uh, um, to uh, uh, Wi-Fi connection in order for um, the village to access, right? Yeah, correct. So, but you can consider that as just standard messaging on your phone. <laughs> if you're if you have no connection, you're not going to get a text. But as soon as you connect, you'll get your text. Right? Same idea. Yeah, yeah. And I was going to ask. So then, um, the village. So everyone would just create an account. Is it connected underneath um, the profile of the student? So you would like sign up under them. Like, walk me through like what the what that step would look like. Yeah, generally speaking, the, the main flow, and there's different flows, but the main flow is a parent comes on and a parent creates the learners and they just create links. Uh, we have like smart links that we send to the learner, the learner logs in and then the link is dead. And then we have another link that they can share to everybody in their family. So if they already have like a group conversation on WhatsApp or something, they can just share that individual link. People can register and then the parent just has to accept them afterwards. So it's kind of a very easy share two links and then everybody can be on the platform process. Perfect. And I, um, I love that the, uh, there is um, uh, parent approval that's in there. And yeah. then um, is it uh, live chat or is it video and chat? Like what does the interface look like for the village to the student and vice versa? Yeah, currently it would be, I guess, akin to, well, there's no video, so it is mostly chatting and pictures. So you can send pictures of, and we're thinking that, you know, the idea would be that, for example, there's rewards in that project. So the child continues to play for two weeks. They earn enough points for a reward. Uh -huh. The parent has set up an example, a reward with, you know, your favorite aunt or uncle to go to a restaurant. I guess that one doesn't happen as much now, <laughs> but to order your favorite food um, from your favorite restaurant, right? And then the um, the post could then be from the aunt or uncle who are doing it to take a photo with the child and post that back to the village like hey we just claimed this reward you know check it out and then people can kind of interact with like that whole the child learned something and they earn the reward which is like a personal physical thing with somebody that they hopefully love <laughs> and then you know they <laughs> all kind of get to enjoy that moment and share Our, that with the village i love that so it's in um the gamified piece of, of this is the incentivification piece where each time you meet a benchmark, then your incentive is to do something fun with that villager, whether it's an aunt, uncle, or cousin, or whatever. That's, yeah, I think that's, <laughs> that's one of the... I'm going to sign my nephews up because this is perfect. Well, hopefully we get to those curriculums in time, but in general, it's about the, uh, yeah, that's just one of the incentives that the child has in terms of the gamification. I mean, it's, it goes deep. I think if you look at the product, you'll see that it's one of the most gamified educational projects out there. So um, the curriculum that's on there, um, and I, I guess um, my question is two parts. Um, so is it, it's tracking the homework. Um, of the student, but it's also a curriculum that is um, across all uh, disciplines of math, English, history, science. Is that correct? That is the long-term goal, is to have a full curriculum that would be the repl a replication, basically, of their sixth grade experience in school in the platform. Um, currently, we're going to have sixth grade math and ELA first rather soon, or that's what we're currently working on. Um, yeah. Perfect. So it's going to be rolled out in phases. So the math um, that the student will be doing, it's based on you all's curriculum, but will it also talk to the uh, whatever home uh, math um, assignments they're getting from their school? Those are integrations that we have to create, but that would be the ideal that we're able to, because our courses are tied to um, missions, uh, common core missions, so the common core standards. So the idea would be that once a child has done the daily to the level that we think is sufficient, we can then tie that into their schooling platform and kind of get that information over. Oh, wow. So um, gosh, this is just so incredible because that, you know, just thinking about it, like I said, from a, the perspective of an aunt, you know, a caregiver, um, 
but also as a professional working in that space and just how valuable it is. So um, how are, uh, what is the, uh, the long-term approach to integrating um, teachers into the platform and, and allowing them or anyone from the education system, whether it, because, and I guess my question is connected um, actually more to right now, there's a lot of conversations happening around how are we going to support our special needs students in a way that um, they need it. And right now um, it's, it's, it's a huge challenge um, uh, that, uh, that exists there. Is, is this some of the conversations that you all are having like long-term um, about addressing those things as well as how to integrate the um, educators into the platform? Yeah, so I guess I'll treat those as two different questions. In terms of the, the educators and the teachers, um, we're already kind of in conversation, like most of our team is made up of teachers and they're already pretty excited about our teacher features in general. I mean, it's bringing in teachers to the current social features and then probably having a reward system that's specific for teachers so maybe it's like on a per moderator level right so parents can set their family rewards and teachers can set their own specific in classroom rewards and those are two very different things and currencies that are kind of happening at the same time um, in terms of you know the, the teacher now can have we want to see how to integrate them such that the parents still feel like they can talk amongst their family in a way that might not be read by the teacher, but they could also have that conversation with the teacher. So that's just different ways of having like two different groups maybe inside of the learner. That's not stuff that we've yet to figure out, but that's kind of what we're thinking. So you could have like two different silos, so to speak. And no matter what, the child is a part of all the silos. There's no one-on-one -on -one communication with the child. It's all to the group, um, which we think it's best to just kind of have that transparent uh, communication happening. Um, and then in terms of, you know, special needs or people who, um, I mean, we, we just adapt. Our curriculum is pretty adaptive. So if you're, ha if you're supposed to be on the seventh grade curriculum where you're doing those courses and you're struggling, you know, that's something that we call out rather early. It's like, hey, to check out the sixth grade uh, vocabulary. Um, we also, when you're doing like the definition of a word, for example, you can always request like, I don't get this section. I get like an earlier, <laughs> like a, um, a simpler version of this vocabulary and we just kind of dip, dip down, right? So what is the seventh grade version of this word? Sixth grade, fifth grade, et cetera. Wow. This is a, oh, gosh, I'm just so excited about this. If I had thought I would have had you cue something up so that the viewers could like see like a sample of it, I wasn't even thinking um, about <laughs> this, but you all just go to the site. Um, uh, we'll give you all the information at the end of our uh, show so that you can go straight there and sign up for it, share it with your um, community and ecosystem. Um, so uh, my other question is connected to data collection. So as you have this um, put out, are you extracting any data from the user in to share um, the pros and cons, um, things that they would like to see uh, more of? Um, what are you all looking at around that? Uh, we're not really yet at that level. Uh, for the most part, I think in terms of data collection, we're hoping to keep it, you know, very transparent. Like you kind of own your data uh, mm -hmm. with that you put on the platform. If we're going to make any use of it, then it's just going to be like anonymized data. So we're saying, you know, most students are, and I think most of the data that we're looking at now is really just, did we make a mistake <laughs> in this problem? Is everybody getting this problem wrong? Is it the wording? You know, that's the kind of stuff that I think we're actually currently looking at and not that that deep because I mean we're I mean generally small uh, and underfunded so we're still you know hoping to get more people interested in the project and everything else so that is something else that um, I was leading into um, which is part of that call to action I always ask you know what is the call to action for those that may be uh, tuning in um, uh, and this is more of a two part of the call to action is how can they step up and be supportive of what you all are doing, but also encouraging um, uh, them to, uh, you know, find their, their, their space to flow and operate in. So 
it sounds like you have some needs here and let's get those out there to the audience. So what is it that, that our call to the, the floor? Our, our needs as any young organization are pretty much limitless. Um, but I think overall it's, if, you know, if you're a parent um, who has a child in the middle grade or uh, in the middle, in middle school, um, and if you have extended family who have that, those connections as well, to definitely check out the platform and give us feedback. I think that's most important is actually getting feedback from parents, what they love, what they don't love. Um, easily the most important thing actually <laughs> would be that. Uh, secondarily would be obviously if you happen to be a principal or superintendent in a school, then, you know, and you think this is something that would be very useful for your school or, or maybe even if you wanted to have your curriculum put in our platform because you like the gamification features and the village aspect of it, then that's something that we're willing to do as well. I think those are the two primary, um, Things that we could use. I mean, besides just straight up an investor who wants to fund it, <laughs> which oh, is an obvious one also. Right. Investors, anyone out there who is looking to fund, I know right now there's a lot of um, investors looking to fund education programming um, and especially that innovative approach that not um, many people are looking at, which is exactly what you're doing here. Um, so anyone who is connected to investors or know someone who would want to support um, something like this, please do reach out directly. Um, do you uh, actually uh, accept, uh, even though it's free right now, do you all have the capacity to accept donations or sponsors or anything? Is, is, is that something you all are open to? Yeah, definitely. We were also considered potentially doing a Kickstarter to fund kind of the greater curriculum needs because it honestly, it's massive. <laughs> I mean, building out a K-12 curriculum is a massive undertaking. Um, so we're happy to do it as slowly or as efficiently each other along as we can, but obviously the more resources, the faster. And I think this is something that is crucial. I mean, if, if the child gets this at the right time, it could be make or break. Right, if it's fifth grade, sixth grade, and they were struggling with something, and odds, the odds are that somebody in their family could have helped them past that, and they just maybe were too shy to ask about it. Or, you know, I think everybody wants to kind of figure it out on themselves, and you don't have to as a child, right? We all know, we all went through that same thing. We're like, we're, we're too smart. <laughs> we're very smart. We're struggling, and maybe have a little bit of shame. And I, I myself didn't really ask that much of my uncles and aunts when I was growing up, but I probably should have knowing now that I have nieces and nephews, how I would love to help them out. And I try to as much as I can, but you know, something like this would have made it much easier in general. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, oh, so um, I just thought about this. Um, is it, um, uh, I don't know the right way to, to ask it, like, um, is it language? Um, so can, obviously we all have different, um, languages that we speak is the system equipped to um, host um, various languages I don't know if I asked that question right if I have those so I have some family members that are bilingual right and mm -hmm. um, or monolingual and so if I have a student who is say monolingual English, but I have a um, family member who, um, like is there a translator feature on there or can I use my own language? Um, like is So you can communicate in your own languages. We definitely support, you know, all, kind, all standard alphabets, I think in general. So you can communicate okay. however you need to. And then that's what I'm trying to ask. Portal. Oh my God, that was a struggle for <laughs> I couldn't articulate it. That's what I was asking. The the parent portal, which is what you know, the application the parents interface with, is actually localized, so you can um, check it out in Spanish. Like if you're a Spanish learner, then most of it is translated to Spanish for you as well. Wow, that is so awesome! Like, dude, Manuel, my God, like you are what we are looking for in this space and i'm excited that you have taken the leap to um build this out and recognizing that you didn't have you weren't equipped to do it all and you needed to have the right people at the table i think that's one of the most important 
things that we have to remind ourselves is that everything is connected to village. It takes a village for us to move the needle on us improving systems that are broken or that are favored towards one group over another, which then causes that group to not be able to um, thrive um, and barely survive. And I just appreciate you um, looking at that and saying, I'm going to address this and I'm going to get the right minds together. Is there opportunity um, for others who may be seeking um, groups like yours to connect with and provide when their expertise um, in the space? Is there like um, a way that they can connect with you um, in that space as well? Are you open to that? Yeah, definitely. Um, you know, we're open to whoever wants to participate in whatever capacity they can. Uh, we have, you know, interns actually who are helping us build our curriculum. We have interns who are helping us uh, get the word out in partnerships and growth related and they're, they're all pretty amazing individuals. I mean, they do things that I didn't expect all the time, which is a lot of fun. <laughs> um, just to kind of see, like, I guess, the skills that people have that they kind of didn't really mention, I guess, up front. And it's just like, hey, we need this. And somebody's like, well, I can do that. You know, and you get something like an awesome video editor out of nowhere or whatever it may be. So, yeah, we're definitely open to that. And that's part of the experience, I think. For example, our lead engineer is somebody who's been working with me for a long time. Uh, he's been he didn't get he doesn't have a computer science degree we've just been working together for so long and at this point i think he's a killer engineer he could definitely work on in a facebook if he wanted to for example but luckily he's not going to consider that because he loves dailies <laughs> yo an apprenticeship right there in the making well this is incredible um so manuel tell them again where they can find you on social media uh, yeah, so it's, I mean, at Daily's app, you can reach out to us at any of those channels. Um, me personally at mzamora at dailiesapp.com. Perfect. And those of you all who are on the membership page for We The Plug, he is also a member on there, so you can connect with him on there as well. And I am so thrilled to um, know you now and i look forward to staying connected and just promoting everything that you're doing um i am going to go on there and sign up um <laughs> today uh and get my um my nephews involved um with this because i i just i know the value of it um and i didn't know the village part like that's what really like got me like so good that is so good well Thank you so much, Manuel, for taking out time for speaking with us today. Um, again, you all, um, if you're wanting to know more about this, do go on um, Instagram, LinkedIn, or We The Plug uh, membership page and connect with Manuel directly or Daily's um, app, uh, the website. Again, we thank you so much for taking out time to speak with us today. We appreciate you. We hope you're staying safe. And those of you all that are watching, stay safe and remember that you are the plug, okay? And if you haven't already, definitely join us on the platform, membership platform at www.wethe.plug.com. See y'all next time. Bye. Bye.